Hello everyone and welcome to the DeerCast. Today we're joined again by Paul Hill uh, from Corinium Rifle Range. Um, much like a piece of IKEA furniture, most of us have probably bought a set of Viperflex sticks or other branded sticks at some point and got them out of the box, not read any instructions and just decided we're going to know how to use them. Paul here is going to very helpfully talk us through exactly how to set up your sticks, both in terms of the first time you get them out of the box, but also how to set them up when you've decided to take a shot. So here you go guys, watch and learn. Okay, coming on to how we actually set our quad sticks up um, for use in the field. Depending on which sticks you buy, obviously it will differ. Look at the manufacturer's recommendations, look at the instructions that will likely come with the sticks. Don't do typical bloke stuff, try and set them up and then read the instructions afterwards and get to a horrible mess. We always go through how to set them up with clients when they purchase a set off us, um, as a matter of course, and then they will go away and forget it. Um, practice at home, play around with them, get used to it. Not all sticks are the same or just the same. So for instance, the Viperflex ones have like spring-loaded buttons up and down here. You press those down and you move them around. Regardless of which set of sticks you buy, we'd always recommend doing the sides first. Don't do the front and then the back because they're pulling against each other. Turn them on the side like so. And you're, they're there lying in your hand so you can adjust them up and down. With this particular set, we always have the bottom section fully, fully out. There's a stop mark on it so you know it's the same every single time. What we're trying to do is get these plastic ferrules aligned. So it's plastic on plastic. That doesn't make a horrible noise in the field. Metal on metal it will. Metal on metal will scare deer. That's why we made our original sticks from wood. Um, you know, you can rub antlers or knock antlers together, you can attract fallow. The same with roebucks. You can knock, knock antlers together, knock on a tree, it'll sometimes bring them in. A wood on wood sound is not unnatural in the field. Metal on metal genuinely is. So have the sticks so you can adjust them. Effectively, get them to the right height for you. Now, what is the right height for you? Again, depending on the stick, okay? Depending on your stick technique. And this is something we've worked on an awful lot with people, stick technique. It's not a lot of things, or not many places where you can go and you know, practice on sticks or the relevant shooting positions. Some ranges are very, very formal, uh, military ranges where you can't do that. You know, you're there just to shoot some targets and that's it. When we designed this range, we designed it with stalkers in mind to help them practice techniques in the field. So what we've, come up, what we've come up with over the years, as it were, is we have them at about nose height. Okay, so you're looking over them. One of the reasons I have them there as well is so if I'm glassing something, I put my binoculars on top and I've got a nice steady rest. Okay, so have them about that height there. With the Viperflex and the Blaser, you've got a little bit of play, you've got a little bit of leeway, you can go a little bit wider, a little bit more open, so it's not as critical, okay? But what you want to do, or what you make sure of, is that when the sticks are apart, okay, you're not stretching either on tiptoes or getting too low. Now, I would rather be too low than too high, and I can shoot from a lower set of sticks. It's just adjusting your body position, putting your feet a little bit further back, and bending from the waist. Never bend from the knees. Always bend, if you're gonna bend at all, if you have to, bend from the knees. Ideally, you should be a little bit more upright, okay? So a little bit more relaxed, and it's all about relaxation. When you stand to the sticks, copy your shoulder angle through your hips and your feet. So you're not twisting at all, okay? No tension in your back, no tension in your legs. So you hit your shoulder at 45 degrees on the rifle stock, make sure your hips are and make sure your feet are. And that way you can be far more stable with less twisting in your body. Rest the sticks against you, head on the back of the stock, easy peasy. With these sticks here, they, they are, they are kind of, they stop going forwards and backwards with the strap, which we added. The blaster sticks have exactly the same. Wonder where they came up with that idea from. Side to side, these go out and lock out so we don't get any movement there. So this is very important that you get the height of the sticks right initially before you then go and shoot. So we faffed around, we've got the sticks to the correct height, they're all locked solid and ready to go stalking. So how do you deploy them when you're actually in the field? Well, as you can imagine, I see lots of stuff like here on the range and people throw the sticks out or they get the sticks like this, then they put the rifle up here, they're lifting the rifle around, it's wafting all over the place, and they're working against the weight of the rifle. And rifles aren't very lightweight, unless you're like Tom, who uses one of these funny kind of pencil thing, single barrel arrangements. Most rifles have got a decent scope on them, moderator, maybe even a bipod on them. It's a little bit heavy, and it's too heavy because I'm lifting them around. So, side to side, okay? Carry your sticks, one hand, doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed. For some reason, and I don't know why I've taken to doing this, but I've always carried my sticks in my left hand. 
Maybe because I'm using my binoculars in my right hand more and I can press my sticks against myself and then I've got my binoculars here and I'm away again. I wear a, a bino pouch so I can pop them in there and my right hand is better for doing things like that with. So, my sticks are always in my left hand. If you want a camera in your right hand, it's entirely up to you. Do what works for you, trial and error, practice it, but get competent with it. So, I always uh, deploy them by literally putting my hand out to the right hand side, dropping the right hand one down and pulling the sticks back towards me, and then they're directly in front of me. If you put them out here, then you're kicking them apart, and I see this, people kicking them out, making noise and what have you. Okay, you can deploy these silently, okay? Reach across, put the stick down, pull them back so they're in line with your body. Then take a step back, lower them down. You don't want to be fighting against the weight of the rifle, okay? In this position, because these sticks are connected, you could actually let the back stick go. Then you put the rifle on, like so, okay? Lift the rifle on here, you're not fighting with the full weight of the rifle. The stock can go back in here because you're using your hand underneath the rifle, and then you can calmly walk forward one pace and you're behind the rifle. I'll demonstrate that with the rifle in good Blue Peter fashion. Here's one we prepared earlier. Just for safety's sake, I'll demonstrate that the rifle is clear. Okay, the bolt's open, the rifle is clear. I'm going to close the bolt on an empty chamber. I'll make sure the safety cap is applied, but we are dealing with an empty rifle. Now, again, how you carry your rifle very much depends on personal preference. I've always carried my rifle muzzle down. I'm just over six foot, so I'm not bothered about the muzzle getting in the mud. If you are concerned, stick something over the end of the muzzle, a bit of tape or something. But I've always carried it muzzle down because it balances better. And I carry it on my left shoulder. I don't know why, because I'm right-handed, but I've always find it easier to carry my rifle on my left shoulder. Maybe because my kind of right-handed bias moves it around less, but it always sits comfortably on my left shoulder. Okay, and for me, it's a very simple matter of deploying the sticks like so, the sticks are out. Now, because it's on my left shoulder, I'm gonna be putting the rifle on the sticks with my left hand, okay? I don't mind that because my left hand will be forward on the sticks, okay? So I'm not swapping hands around. And for me, I just take hold of the sticks like so, take a step back, roll the rifle off my shoulder, place it on the sticks like so, and there you go. Very, very simple. I wouldn't say child's play, it's a method we've used for many, many years, um, and it's just practice, simple as that. When you've taken the shot, or a shot that didn't actually come off, um, you didn't shoot the animal, it's just reverse, it's as simple as that. Walk backwards, lift the front of the rifle, your sticks collapse like so, and you're good to go. The rifle can come back down, and you're back on your shoulder, and you're off talking again. It's always a deployment that matters, okay? So practice that. Work with your sticks, get them set to what is a comfortable height for you. As I mentioned before, the comfortable height for me is about eye level. That allows me to put my binoculars on for spying animals and looking for animals, um, using a thermal, whatever you're doing. Um, it is child's play, just practice it and develop a method that suits you. So a huge thank you to Paul again uh, for teaching us all not only how to set up our shooting sticks, um, but then how to use them out in the field. Hopefully it makes us all better stalkers. So thank you very much, Paul. As per usual guys, please remember to comment, like and subscribe. If you've got any questions for Paul, drop them in the comments below uh, or you can message Paul directly at the Corinium Rifle Range.